Thank you. I'm afraid there are no supplementaries because I'm getting 300 at the same time. So we are going to continue with the next question. Remember, I'm going to, I'm going to ask for quiet. If I am going to ask for quiet, sir, or you will be ejected from this meeting. If the person to whom the question is addressed does not answer the question, then it is for him a defect and an advantage to his opponent. And therefore, we will not address ourselves to those kind of issues. The next question is for Mr. Didat. A quotation, I and the Father are one. In the Greek, the word one is neuter, denoting one in essence and one in nature, not just one in purpose. Mr. Didat, would you like to comment? This one in Greek is hen, H-E-N, hen, hen, one. Now, the same word hen is used in John chapter 17, where Jesus is speaking to God Almighty. He says, I am one with you and you with me and the disciples with me. I in thee and thou in me. We are all one hen, same hen. So now, if this one makes one in that bodily form like a sausage, one becomes like a sausage with God, or Jesus becomes one with God as a sausage because it says this is one means one. Like Adam and Eve, the Bible says that they twain shall be one flesh, one sausage. No, in purpose, same word in Greek, hen. The same word in Greek, hen, for the disciples, of, including Thomas and, and Judas, all of them, we are one with you, I with you, God Almighty, and you with me, you are one with me, and I with, in them. Now that oneness, I'm asking, what oneness? Same hen in Greek. Does it mean that they all became a sausage? All the 12 disciples and the traitor Judas and with God and Jesus become a sausage? No. This one is in purpose and not in body or power or omnipotent or omniscience. For Dr. Shirosh, what do you mean by the statement, Jesus is Son of God? The questioner wants to say, with my full respect, do you mean Jesus is direct Son of God, Son of the God, as I am the Son of my Father? Or do you have another meaning? Would you please explain? If you would please remember that it is a spiritual title. God never married anybody. God is a triune God. And I'd like to urge you to consider that when we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we see the Trinity 113 times in the Quran, like the Bible says, Bismillah wal ibn wa ruh al-Qudus. We must love one another. We must recognize the truth of God in Christ, reconciling you to Himself. Thank you. Mr. Dinat, could you please explain how God could save the world? Could you please explain how God could save the world as the New Testament claims if Jesus was not God coming in the flesh? Let me first correct my brother Shurosh about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You see, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim means in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Allah, Allah who is most gracious, most merciful, and he's those God's 99 attributes. That is Allah. He's not 99 gods. He's not three in one. Whereas the Christian formula is in the name of the Father, and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Three. How does God save the world? That was the question. How does He save? 
There is only one way. And the way is believe in God and do good deeds. This is what Jesus says. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, most assuredly, I'm telling you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you are better than the Jew, there is no heaven for you. That is the way of salvation. Now, Mr. Didat has concluded that comment on a very positive statement. I'm going to throw that same one open to Mr. Shirosh and allow him to conclude on a similar positive statement, albeit a very brief one. Thank you. Once again, I remind you, Jesus never told a lie. Amen. He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that anyone believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, that he sacrificed his only begotten Son, that anyone believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When Abraham tried to provide his son, God said, no, I will provide the offering. Amen. And we praise God that tonight we can say for a truth, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in three, three in one, mystery, neither you nor I can understand it, but we can accept it like a Christian. I'm going to ask for your quiet for a moment or two. Between one and two thousand people were unable to get in here tonight, and therefore they were reluctantly turned away by the police on the instruction of the authorities here because there was no room. I felt when I heard about this that it must be impossible for a debate of this kind to be carried out between a Christian and a Muslim. I'd like to ask you to thank the speakers.